So, um, hi everyone. Um, this is the first time for me in this, uh, in this symposium and this, uh, this group. And I want to just say that I'm, I'm Roberto Biello and uh, work um, in the Hogenut lab in the, the Janine Center uh, uh, in Norwich. So I'm going to talk today about, yes, uh, the, the budget project and specifically all, uh, of the population genetics analysis that we are doing on the Fidenus pumarius, the middle spider bug, that is the main insect vector of uh, Xiella fastidiosa in, uh, in Europe. Um, uh, sorry. Yes, so the, um, the digit project is a consortium for improving and enhancing the UK surveillance in response to the Xiella uh, fastidiosa that include uh, many different institutes across the, the, the UK. So if you want to have a look at the at the project, uh, the project uh, you can see the website for all the details. So the uh, the, 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 the main uh, goal of this part of the project that uh, I'm working on is the, to generate the genomics and transcriptomic data for Pilenus pumarius and also for the other potential insect vectors uh, of uh, Xylla fastidiosa in, in the UK. There are, there are 18 uh, species uh, that can be vector of uh, this bacterium in uh, the UK. So this data will be very useful for the diagnostic of this insect, also be useful to, to, for, to study the population genetics of uh, these, uh, these species, and also to assess the migration of the population among the habitats, uh, and uh, also to, to verify if there is migration of movement and movement of insect vector into and out of the, uh, the, the UK. So who is Xylella uh, fastidiosa? Xylella fastidiosa is, a, is a axylem inhabiting bacterium. It's a plant pathogen. It's, um, it can affect uh, uh, approximately 600 potential plant, uh, plant species, and it can cause different disease in these in this plants. Um, it's originally from America, but here in, uh, in Europe, it's, uh, it's invasive, and uh, it's already been detected in many different um, countries, as you can see from this map in, in Europe, uh, but not yet in, uh, in the UK. In Italy, especially in Italy, it caused uh, uh, an outbreak in a, a big area of, uh, of Puglia in the south of Italy that they destroyed a uh, really big area of uh, olive trees uh, in this region. So this uh, bacterium is uh, transmitted exclusively by xylem fluidy fluidine sub insect and all of these things that belong to the emitter order, like uh, Phyllenis pumarius, that is the main uh, vector in, uh, in Europe. So Phyllenis pumarius, yes, Phyllenis pumarius is a it's, uh, as I said, it's a mitra species. It's extremely common species in the UK, as you can see from the map, you, it's always uh, almost everywhere in the UK, and also in uh, Europe. Roberto, let me come in. Your, your slides aren't moving forward. Sorry, I just realized that. So can you oh, move? sorry. We can still see your first slide, so. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Uh... Uh, I can start again, the yes. share the screen. I'm yes. sorry about this. No, right. uh, can you see? It's coming now. It's black screen at the moment, so there's nothing there. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, Okay, try again. Okay, that, it came through then just at the end before you. Ah, okay. So I, I try again, sorry. Uh, so share. Okay. Just let me know when. Yeah, sorry, we can see it. Yeah, we can see the slide with the map of America and invasive in Europe. Oh, okay. Yes, this is Excel of you. So yes, okay. I, I, I can't, I can't keep going in, uh, go. from, from this one from Philippe Sumarius. Sorry again. Um, so yes, as I said, um, Philippe Sumarius is extremely common in, uh, uh, in the UK, as from, see from this map, it's almost uh, everywhere, and uh, also in the rest of Europe. It's an invasive species in some countries, like in the US and uh, New Zealand, and it's, uh, it's been identified on over 170 host plants and also in different kinds of habitats. So we can say that this species is true, it's a true uh, generalist. Um, the larvae are also familiar because they produce this uh, Cuckoo spit here, we can see from this, this photo that it's uh, quite common to, to see in, uh, 
especially in May and June uh, in, in, the, in the UK in the gardens. So that they're very easy to, it's very common to see. So this species also has been studied for other reasons, also because it's extreme variability in colors, but we can see here that there's a very uh, high variability in, dollar, in colors, in, colors in, uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this insect. And also for the jumping performance that, that this species can, uh, can have. Um, so the first step of the project was to generate the genome assembly of uh, Philos pumarius, uh, and they use this uh, assembly for as reference for the population genetics analysis. And we sequenced the, the genome from just one single insect from uh, a Portugal, a population in Portugal. And we, we, we generated the assembly, we published this last year, and we say that uh, we can say that this assembly is, is complete because we, we can recover more than 90% of. Uh, Orthodox gene present in other arthropods uh, species. And also we confirm previous analysis that estimated the, the genome size of the species. And they found that was uh, the genome size was 2.7 gigabases. And then we can see that it's one of the largest genome uh, within the, the Mitra order. So um, the second step was to, uh, to collect in 2019. We collected uh, with our colleagues, we collected uh, Philenus pumarius insect from, uh, from different parts of the, the UK. We collected from Scotland, from uh, Yorkshire, Wales, uh, Sussex, and Norfolk, and also from a nursery in, uh, in, in Kent. And for each of these locations, we, we selected the samples from different habitats. So for example, here in Norfolk, uh, we have uh, samples from, uh, dif from different meadows or from woodland, uh, approximately in the same, the same area. So in total, we sequenced uh, the whole genome, uh, a low coverage of 116 uh, samples that we used for, we used for, for the population uh, analysis. But the first thing we did was to, um, with this data, it was to uh, analyze a specific gene, uh, a mitochondrial gene, the SOI gene. This is because uh, uh, they were already uh, present, uh, published from, by Rodriguez et al. in 2014, many sequences of this, uh, this gene from different European populations. So we decided to combine our data from 116 samples and also uh, the data from, from Rodriguez et al. What we found, we, may, we generated this uh, phylogenetic tree and we found as uh, Rodriguez et al that in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, there are at least three uh, mitochondrial uh, lineages. But the interesting thing is that these uh, lineages, uh, we found two lineages in, uh, in the UK populations. So we found that uh, the insect from Norfolk, Sussex, Kent, and Yorkshire, some, some samples from some Yorkshire, belong to the, this Western Midarina sublineage, that is the green one in, in the tree. And that's so, and while the, the samples from Scotland, Wales, most of the samples from Yorkshire belong to the Eastern lineage, but we didn't find any. Uh, Insects that belong to the Eastern Midarina sublineage, this, this red one here. So we have two different lineages in, um, in, uh, in the UK populations. When we have a look at the, at the map from Rodriguez et al, we see better the distribution of these three lineages in, uh, in, in the Europe. So we, uh, I call here by the color, and we say that the, 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 blue, the blue lineage that we found in Scotland, uh, Yorkshire, and Wales is typical of North Europe and also Turkey, especially in some mountains in Turkey. Uh, so they probably prefer, that or they adapted to colder uh, climates. So the other one is the green one that we found in the south, southeast of England, that it's typical of West and Central Europe. And we see that it's, it's typical of Portugal and Spain and France. And then we have the, the last one, the red one, we didn't find any in, uh, in the UK, but it's typical of uh, Greece, Italy, and some region in, in Spain. So probably they are more adapted to the, uh, the war uh, warmer, warmer climates. But when we analyze the whole genome data from, from, from our 116 samples, we found, find something, found something a bit different because we didn't see any more to just two distinct lineages, but we have more a geographical pattern among the six localities uh, in, in the UK. So we have this principal component analysis. So we have every dot is a sample. And then uh, we can see clearly that this, the samples from the same location that tend to cluster uh, 
uh, together. So there, there is a, a, a genetic structure based on the geography. Uh, and we just in this, the case of Sussex and Kent population that they're quite similar, but because they're quite also close uh, geographically. And when we analyzed, uh, we tried to, um, to estimate the genetic differentiation among this population to see if how much they're different. Um, we didn't see a very high level of genetic differentiation. We used this FST index to estimate this uh, genetic differentiation. And when we pick the most distant population uh, and also the, the most diverse populations here in Scotland and uh, Saxon, we didn't see a uh, very high level of genetic differentiation. So this, this means that these two lineages are not uh, um, isolated. There is probably there is a continuum in the UK of migration and gene flow among the population. So it's not, there are not many isolated population, probably it's just a continuum of the distribution of the, this, uh, this insect. So we can summarize that we have two different mitochondrial lineages in, in, in the UK, the blue uh, in the north and, uh, and, oops, and west, and also we have the green ones in the, the south, the southeast of England. So these two lineages seem that they are admixed now, so probably they, they are not isolated anymore, so you can see there are not so much differences. And also we say that, that we are able, uh, even if there is a, a low genetic differentiation, we see that these uh, population are separated based on the geographic location. And the last thing that we didn't see any uh, insect uh, that belonged to the red lineage that is common in other in Southern uh, Europe. So the official work, we already collected a sequence in 2020, approximately 200 uh, samples with our collaborators. And we sequenced uh, uh, areas that we didn't have in the first, uh, the first analysis. So we sequenced already uh, other region of UK, in UK, like gardens or nursery, also areas that we didn't see, we didn't sample before. And also we sequenced uh, the insect from uh, where a region from region where Xylavas diosa was detected, like Italy, uh, France, Spain, and, uh, and the Corsican. And also we have uh, samples from, from region where the, the blue, the Eastern mitochondrial lineages uh, is uh, present like uh, Finland and Turkey. And finally, we uh, sequence also samples that uh, from uh, this uh, little uh, area in North Italy, where we, we know that in the same area, there are all the three uh, mitochondrial lineages so present in the same area. So it's be interesting to see if they admix, if they, if they, uh, they are different. So if finally, to help with, uh, with the analysis, we also generated a new uh, assembly of Pumarius, would be the version two. And this is a chromosome level assembly because we were able to, uh, with different uh, kind of sequencing, we were able to uh, recover the chromosomes uh, of these, uh, these species. So we, we recover uh, from this map, you can see that each, each square, each blue square is a super scaffold of our, our assembly. And we see that um, most of our assembly uh, correspond to the 12 uh, chromosomes that are the N karyotype of uh, Philanius primarius. So this is going to be a very useful resource for the other, for the further uh, future population analysis, also to study the evolution of the species in the other, other vectors. Uh, finally, I want to thank all the people that are working on this project and helping me with this, uh, with this, with this uh, uh, huge work. And uh, I want to thank you for listening.